what the future of food holds exactly, Bernstein says better innovation will be the distinguishing mark between restaurant chains. And they even have a few names they say are ready, already ahead of the curve. For more, let's bring in Danilo Gargiulo, senior research analyst for restaurants at Bernstein. Danilo, thank you very much for being with us. You say that social media is the new real estate and that companies with a visible digital presence will outpace those who mostly rely on physical stores as a primary form of advertising. I guess what you're saying here is that the companies that, that are out front on Instagram and TikTok and others uh, will have the more effective connection to consumers, the more effective advertising. But I also wonder if this isn't an opportunity for the smart local non-chain player to make their name and prominence more notable online, digitally as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Tyler, and thank you for having us. Um, I would say the local players obviously have an advantage into using the digital communities locally um, to really foster the consumer on their street or in their local uh, cities to basically get some a presence that they wouldn't have otherwise, and some additional advertising they wouldn't probably have otherwise. The real challenge, and that is the reason why we believe that we are leading toward a more chain uh, uh, restaurants in the United States, well, the real differentiator here is going to be who's going to be able to afford that level of investment uh, to really bring at scale consumers onto your, onto your restaurants. Uh, again, we think that larger companies, you know, companies that have real um, uh, kind of digital assets already developed, as well as better and more refined mm -hmm. ways to get to the consumers through data, could really understand who to target in a more cost-efficient way. So the ROI for them is going to be higher. And therefore, we believe that there is going to be even more concentration in the U.S. Although I will say uh, a diner in my town, a deli, uh, has 50 million views on TikTok and almost half a million followers. That's uh, amazing. Uh, yeah. Parkwood. And they're just the local joint. And they now draw people from all over. Uh, yeah. They have a dynamic personality. Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering, Danielle, it's, it's fascinating to think about it because... Little Angelo's, my, my favorite uh, uh, Italian restaurant in, in Bloomfield, New Jersey, there's the plug. They can't afford to compete uh, advertising-wise with Olive Garden or any, anybody else on television. They're not going to buy a spot on an NFL game, but they can get to me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, the uh, uh, kind of the key difference is going to be, again, who is able to do it at a scale? The local restaurants might be able to get their local community excited. Mm -hmm. You're looking potentially at kind of a, a edge cases of restaurants who have been particularly popular in their local communities. For those type of examples, absolutely. I think that the social media expansion, mm -hmm. as well as just in general, digital advertising, it is more of a kind of a more democratized way to get access to your consumers versus just focusing on the real estate. Uh, but we are talking in our view onto edge cases on average, if you're thinking about kind of the global uh, tech capabilities that a, a local restaurant might be having, but yeah. well, it's a little bit rarer to see those type of examples. So on average, we're expecting to see more sophisticated players to be able to be outpacing the local restaurants. Although your point is very valid. You may yeah. well see, you know, the very special place that is able to really attract the local consumer mm -hmm. and boost up mm -hmm. more their traffic. 